Hello everyone. In this session, I'm going to be teaching you about the Fibonacci sequence, which is a sequence found in nature. Now, I must admit, this is quite a complex mathematical sequence. So you're going to have to watch the instructions really carefully. And it's something that you might get wrong a few times before you get it right. So I hope that you have the patience and the perseverance to continue with it, because it really is a fascinating connection between art and mathematics. The Fibonacci sequence reflects patterns of growth spirals found in nature. It's been called nature's secret code and nature's universal rule. It is said to govern the dimensions of everything, from the iconic seashell, the leaves on a plant, or the middle of a flower. Nature's spirals are not accidentally this perfect. This is evidence of the Fibonacci sequence, which is one of the most famous formulas in mathematics. The Fibonacci sequence starts like this. Zero, one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one, thirty-four, fifty-five, and so on. And the way we work this out is each number is the sum of the two numbers that precede it. For example, one plus one equals two, one plus two equals three, two plus three equals five. Now it's quite complex. So grab yourself some paper, get a pencil and a ruler, and we'll begin making our own Fibonacci spiral. Make sure your ruler is straight on the page. At every centimetre, add a pencil dash. You will also need one centimetre marks at the top of your page. To make it easier, turn your page over, lay your ruler on the page, making sure it's straight, and then mark your one centimetre dots. Now working across the width of the page, the shortest edge, join the dots together and you should have nice parallel lines that are one centimetre apart. We're aiming to make a grid, so now we need to make sure we have one centimetre gaps in the opposite direction. So choose one of the lines at the bottom of the page, mark your one centimetre gaps, and then do the same at the top of the page. Turn your page back on its side and now join up the new dots that you have just created, making sure they're parallel to the top edge and the bottom edge of your page. start anywhere on the page but to make things easier I suggest you start 12 boxes from the bottom and 7 boxes from the right and draw a square. This will be the centre of our spiral. Our spiral is going to flow anti-clockwise so the next thing you do is another centimetre box on top of your first box. So that's the one and one completed. So the next one we know is two. Now you need to be creating squares every time. So the next square is two boxes by two boxes, two centimeters by two centimeters. One plus two equals three. So the next box underneath is three centimeters by three centimeters. And you'll notice that your first boxes are starting to add up to the same length. 2 plus 3 equals 5, so the next box is 5 centimetres across. Hopefully you're able to follow along at home. The next in the sequence is 8 boxes. 3 plus 5 equals 8. So drawing the boxes 8 across, you'll notice 
and it will be always adding up. Your boxes will always line up with what you've previously drawn. Now this should take you to the end of your page. Okay, so you'll be right on the edge of your page at the top of your number eight box. Next box to the left will be 13. Five plus eight equals 13. And finally, the last box down is 21 centimetres, but you'll notice that you don't have enough space to do that. Technically, the spiral should start even smaller than your first box. So if you divide your first box in half, and then the left half into half again, you can start the beginning of your spiral. Now I'm using my free hand to draw my spiral, making sure that it curves from the corner to the corner. But as my spiral gets bigger, I'm going to need to use some tools. Ideally, using a pair of compasses is the best thing at this kind of scale. However, I didn't have a pair of compasses, so what I've used is just a piece of string and tied it around my pencil. It's important that you know where to put the string. So I'm moving my sketchbook around in order to do this more successfully. Keeping the string taut and using my other hand to secure it in the corner, I then make sure the pencil is touching one side of the box and it will travel to the opposite side of the box and it should in theory create a nice curve. Now if you're using a pair of compasses then you just put your point of your compass where my left hand is and the other side where the pencil is of the compass where my pencil is. This should create a nice curved edge. Keep moving your sketchbook around so that you're making the most of your space and making sure that you're repeating it and the, the um, spiral should get larger and larger. In the last section I've actually flipped over my pencil so I'm holding it in my left hand, making sure that the whole length of the string is 21 centimetres. It will go off the page but you will still get that spiral in the right curve for your Fibonacci sequence. To make your spiral more like a shell, you can add in C shapes that travel from the inside of the shell towards the outside. I'm moving my sketchbook around to make it easier so that I'm not constantly having to move my right hand around the page. Now there probably is a mathematical sequence for the perfection of this part. However, I think we've done enough maths for today and we can decide to use our artistic skills in order to complete this shell. You want to make sure these C sections are spreading further apart the wider you go around the shell. So as the shell spiral widens, so do your curved shapes. Now this is going back to using our contour lines in order to create shape. So showing the curve is going to make the spiral look like it's curved and not flat. Now we can use our knowledge of tone in order to complete our shell and make it look more 3D. I'm using darker tone around the line of the spiral and lighter tone or leaving it blank in the central areas of the shell.
focus makes perfect. So try to practice your Fibonacci spiral using smaller squares. You'll see here at the bottom I divided my squares into half, so there were 5mm squares and I added in some more spirals going in different directions. And I've also added in a bit of colour, keeping a neutral colour palette using browns and ochres and yellows and also pencil and a little bit of pen as well. And I've even added the Fibonacci sequence in numbers and I've added the title, The Fibonacci Shell. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it useful. Uh, I know it's a really hard thing to understand and you might not have got it right the first time and that's okay. Now you might find that using gridded paper like graphics paper or even maths paper uh, might help you out and help you with your practicing of this. So please persevere with it. I've got it wrong many, many times, but I really wanted to share with you something that has fascinated me for years and years. And I always struggled with maths quite a lot. So finding out there's such a strong link between maths and art really, really helped me when I was at school. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'd love to see your drawings.